We have kind of the saying here that greatness is a way of life. And it is a 24-7 mentality in that we want them to believe that anything and everything they do has, uh, has that word great in it. I want to have a great work ethic. I want to have great character. I want to have great integrity. I want to have a great commitment. And, and that is in life. You know, going to the World Series, when we stepped out on that field, honestly, I had a moment where I just took it all in and I teared up because for it to actually become a reality, it's like, gee, I'm living a lot of little girls' dreams. They are only going to play softball here for four years. You know, they're going to live to be 90 years old. So, you know, they've got 70 years of life to, to take what they learn in college and learn about who they are in college. And if, if we can get the one message across that greatness is a way of life, it really helps in the decision making in anything you do in life. It says something when no one leaves after the season's over. Everyone stays and people are like, you're crazy, you know, why are you staying? They're staying because it's Auburn and it's because what have the Myers have done to this program. Good play, good play. Okay. Okay. No, don't worry about it. Hey, we're not doing rundowns. Just see what you can do with the outfielders get a chance to throw. Moving up anyway. Hey, was this not advanced to runner for the hitters? Hey, hang on, Scotty. Ladies, how many runners have we advanced from second to third as a hitter? The outfielders are playing something different. We got to do a better job. Now do your job. Let's go. You know, people ask all the time, what really made you come to Auburn? It's twofold. One, the opportunity to coach with my sons, and two, the people. The, the, the people here are phenomenal. My wife was pregnant with our third child. Uh, we were kind of making a job change. At that time, I was just doing private lessons, and my wife was working in development at Arizona State. And uh, I called Richard Shea of the Bolts and told him, hey, you know, I'm going to be moving to California. My wife's taking a job at a university in California, and he said, uh, I didn't think you would move out of Arizona. I said, yeah, we got to go. There's a job in California. And he said, well, would you consider coming out and running the bolts? Well, I think my dad was at a different spot in life at Arizona State with me being gone. My brother was coaching with the athletics. He was basically the only one there. Leaving Arizona State was a tough decision. The dream was to, you know, coach uh, with both of them. And uh, Auburn made that dream kind of come true. And when the Auburn job came open, one of the stipulations was, can I have my sons with me? And when they said yes, it was a perfect fit for him and for us because we were all together. It's really, when we say home, it's home. Once the hitting coach left, uh, I decommitted just because one of the main things I liked about Auburn, first off, is their engineering program, but for softball, it was the hitting program. And I wanted to be a part of that. So when he left, I was very unsure, and uh, I decommitted and looked at my other options. I first heard about the coaching change about midway through, like after my freshman year, so that summer is when I first heard that our coach was leaving and we were getting a new coach. We didn't know who yet. When I first heard that coach was leaving ASU, I was actually at a tournament, a softball tournament, and a coach walked by and in the middle of a game said, hey Carly, and I turned around and I said, yeah. He says, Coach Myers isn't at ASU anymore. And I actually had to get pulled from the game because I was so upset and I was 
a junior in high school at the time. That was my summer going into my senior year. So I really had no idea. I was like, okay, so is Arizona State still gonna want me? Is coach gonna take me with him? Like what is gonna happen? Really my dream was to be a Sun Devil under him. And so it's kind of like my dream was for a second, like gone. Two weeks after the coaches got hired, um, we were actually playing a tournament and you know, my coach came over there and was like, hey, what do you think about the new Auburn coaches? They just got hired. It's a great hire. I'm like, yeah, it's a great hire, but I don't know if they want me. You know, I don't want to go to a school where I don't want to be wanted. And, you know, Corey was kind of taking it all in. I'm completely oblivious that he's a Myers. And after the game, he came up and introduced himself and he said, hi, my name's Corey Myers. I'll be your coach in the fall. And I kind of, you know, inserted my foot into my mouth, but it, it worked. He wanted to hear my concerns and I told him. I understood, it was just a hard process for me, but a little different route than most people, but that's how I got to Auburn. First team meeting, that was, that was a good one. Um, I didn't know what to expect. My first impression of the team day one is that they weren't believing us. We sat down with them at a dinner in the summer before we started that fall. And you know, you got this old gray-haired fat guy standing up in front of you saying, hey, listen, we're going to the College World Series. And we all just kind of laughed and were like, these guys are saying we're gonna get to the World Series. Like, are you serious? And he wasn't laughing. So we were kind of like, oh man, he's, he's either crazy or he's really good at what he does. You know, that's where uh, the, the most fun is. That is where the best teams play and we're gonna be you know, one of those best teams each and every year, so. I was like, good enough for me. I was hoping you'd say that. He told us that, you know, he's, he's had to do this before. He's had to, he's went from baseball to softball and he's had to go through this process of everyone's gonna be a freshman. He's like, we don't know you, you don't know us. Everyone's on a clean slate. We are all freshmen. I just knew that when he said that, he said it with such conviction that I knew it wasn't just him hoping, it wasn't him wishing, it wasn't him trying to get us to buy in. It was, hey, this is what's gonna happen. Like, you follow what I tell you to do and we're gonna get there. But by Christmas break, they were believing it. And it's amazing to watch athletes gain confidence because that's what sports is, confidence. And, and to watch athletes become confident and start believing in a future that is more possible to them than they ever thought is really magical. Hey, get it down there, get it down there. That's the first principle we have, glove to the ground, knees follow, right? Get it there, so we'll work the glove. Get your stance, we'll just work the glove. Hey, get your balls off to the side. We're all gonna be going left. We're going left. That first practice was really rough. We had people crying, we had people mad. He was mad, he didn't know how to react to us. Hell, practice is hell. No, this way. Hey, as soon as she starts to, as soon as she starts to run, get into your stance, Carly. You're not relaxing, this isn't a picnic. It's, it's tough, it's grueling. I was a mess, and they'll, they'll tell you that. I had no idea where I was going or what I was doing, so it was definitely a tough one. When you have a newbie, it's hard to teach one person already as it is, but when you're teaching a team full of newbies, a whole entire new system, teaching a new game, essentially on how, do you, how you play the game of softball, it was hard. We have a three hour practice and then we don't stop. There is no standing around. We have a practice schedule sent to us every morning. We get quizzed on it right before practice and if someone doesn't know what's on the practice sheet, then we'll run at the end of practice. The mental stress and like the pressure situations that they put you in, I mean, it's really is as game-like as possible at practice. That's better, Carly. Hey, you were in perfect position. That's the pitcher's fault. <laughs> ha, it's your fault. Damn it. It had thrown the ball where it was supposed to be. We wouldn't have to be doing this. That's it, get out there. Good, good. You guys go better to your left than you do straight down. Yes, that's right. That is right. 
All right, Eddie, your turn. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm on the timeline. After month one, we got together and we're like, hey guys, we're actually getting a lot better. We're starting to trust our defense. We're catching balls. That was a big thing is Coach Meyer says, don't think no. You don't go up to him and, well, why'd you do that? Well, I thought, no, you might as well start running. You, know, you don't think when you play here, you know. And after year one, it got better. We only have a little bit of newbies, and we can teach them. We know what to do, and they fall in. They were great kids, and they were eager to learn. And when you have that type of uh, chemistry that people want to learn, they want to get better, it made the teaching you know, a little bit easier. There's so few of them left that they're just so important that we use every minute to prepare ourselves for the next battle. It is extremely important that we understand how to run the bases. I mean, I, I can give you example after example after example. With nobody out, if the ball is caught and you can only get as far as third base, that's it, we'll, we'll take that. If the ball's not caught and you can only get to third base, we'll take that too because there's nobody out. The most important thing is getting to here with one out because we talk about it all the time. Next runner, next batter, all we have to do is get a ground ball. We proved that we could do that. These are things that we practice daily because in, in a game, all it's going to come down to is just recall. Just recall. All right, break it out. See you. Uh, hey, remember, 2 o'clock tomorrow. Awesome. And all your tans really look good. Yeah! Hey, yeah. All natural, Coach. Even, even the ones of you that it's running off of your body look still looking good. Like mine too. Coach, mine's all natural. That's the best tan we got right there, Jay. Ready? 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 The turning point last year had to have been the Bama series. I know they scored five runs in the first inning and put us down real quick. And at that point, everyone was kind of, it was evident that people were hanging their heads. And we were like, man, we, like, we're going to lose this. And we had a, uh, a conversation. Treat this as a Super Regionals. If they were standing in the way between us and the World Series, how would you play? He's like, Where's the fight? Where's Auburn? I don't see it. Let's go. We got to answer the call no matter what. Just give me your best. And I remember we were like, okay, coach is really fired up about this. Like, okay, we can do this. Just the entire game, we would push back, you know, with a few runs, and Bama would push back with a few runs. Just when we think we would be in reach, Bama would push us back. And we're like, okay, come on. Like, we can do this. We're still in this. And I think that was the time when we were like, you know what? Like, no, we're not messing around with this. We're going to fight, and as long as we have outs, we have a chance. I just did, wasn't mentally prepared to step in the box and go through a routine, so I focused more on the mental side of hitting instead of actually the physical part, because I knew I could physically hit. We had to come back twice from five, five run deficits. That kind of showed them the character, not just once that they do it, but twice being five down. You could be up by 10, but you better not lay down at all and sit and you know be relaxed because we'll come for you. Like it doesn't matter how far we're down, we're coming after you. As long as we've got an out, as long as we've got a little life, hey, we're gonna compete our ass off. We grew up on the field that day, and I think it was something that the team really needed last year. Everything kind of got better from that point. And if you look at, uh, over the last two years, um, only twice have we lost a series. Every weekend in the SEC is like a postseason. It's, it's like a Super Regionals every weekend. And that's an important you know, characteristic that teams have to have to be successful because this game is brutal. Like it's not fun at times. And you know, to be able to have that in the back of your mind that you know, we don't press the panic button, like that's the thing. I think that that kind of uh, was a game that set a kind of a bar of what we would try and do, the, the, the concept of how we want to play. My sophomore fall, when we walked into our first team meeting and the freshmen were here and everybody returning, we sat in the room and coach said, we're going to the World Series. None of us laughed. We, we said, okay coach, how are we going to get there? 
The atmosphere here has made a complete 180. The game to us is a game of numbers. You want to play the odds. When we step on this field, we're a family. We all have each other's backs. This is about pride and about learning how to finish as a team. They are a team of firsts, chapter two.